Fantastic. Okay. All right. Reactive, proactive. Uh, I'm proactive. Uh, definitely. Yes. I can see that. I've seen you play and you're definitely not <laughs> a reactive player. Okay. No, so well, yeah, the goal is to get you off your game. If you get the person off their game, then you're going to win your game. Okay. Another one methodical or just all out for whatever. Uh, there's no such thing as methodology in axis and allies because <laughs> at the end of your turn, you don't know what you're going to get, right? What, what you what the dice determine and what your opponent attacks. Um, you know, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I get it. So what is your favorite game variant? I know that we've spoken about the BBR. We've spoken about the balance mod, uh, HBG 36 and 39. And of course you have the Gen Cons and also, uh, I just mentioned BBR, right? So, uh, so what's your favorite favorite axis and, and allies variant uh, to play? I, I'd say uh, Global Forty with the uh, the balance mod. I like I enjoyed a lot. Uh, it added a lot of elements to the game, some different NOs and stuff to make the game a bit more. Um, it just gives you a lot more options in terms of what you want to do. Uh, that said, it's a very close. Well, the very close second is uh, I really liked Anniversary out of the box, uh, hands down. Hmm. That was the best game that that they that the Wizards of the Coast ever gave us. Basically, um, you know, you had two setups right from from the get go, and the balance was almost perfect. Um, and you could have six players, uh, and the box just beautiful and take it all apart. Just a super enjoyable uh, game and a very good looking box and, and, and kit. So oh, definitely the anniversary edition was a beautiful game is a beautiful yeah. game. Uh, unfortunately yeah. for me, I, once the global version of the game came out, yeah. I stopped playing it all together. And yeah, I think that's very common out there. I mean, there are a few people oh, yeah. I know that guys like, uh, Corporal 24 loves to play anniversary. Uh, he's, he's much, pretty much like you. He likes to play everything out there. So, yeah. You know, good for him. I, I I tend to be very niche oriented, which I'm guilty of. So that's something that I, that I have to to work on. Now, I think probably the last subject of, or the last question of the night, because we are running short on time. And let me see what time I have to look at my clock here. Okay, yeah, we still have like a good about seven eight minutes. Uh, but it's a, on it's it's based upon a controversial subject that I actually already brought up to you before in a previous conversation. And that is uh, the, the use of battle calculators in games. Okay, now in the past, I was pretty much against it. However, uh, through various conversations that, have, that I have had, not only with yourself, but, but with other members of the community, I've changed my view, my perspective on this. I'm actually open to the idea of, you know, uh, of having at least in a tabletop format or in, the, or in, a, in a tournament, to have people using battle calculators. I don't have a problem with that now, okay? But it is a, a controversial subject because there are guys out there in the community that say otherwise. They don't like the idea. They think it's a, it, it gives your opponent an unfair advantage. And what say you? Uh, so my official position, as I told you before, is I'm, I'm actually totally indifferent. Uh, and I think that that's because I find that people who, especially face-to-face, -face, if they really have to rely on the calculators, um, it's usually because they're lacking somewhere else. And so you got nothing to worry about. Uh, that, that's, and, and honestly, I want to play my opponent at their best. So if they need a calculator, if that's going to help them make a better judgment, make a better call, I'd like to see that. Uh, and, and I'd like to play, play them at that level. And if I really wanted a calculator, then I'd pull one out, I guess. But I, I never have in a face-to-face -face tournament or setting. Um, battle calculators can be helpful tools. But as I told you, they can also be dangerous and misleading tools. Uh, sometimes you can have a battle that says you're 80% to win, but if somehow you lose, uh, you know, you, you attack and you're one hit less and your opponent's plus one, which is very minor variation, that battle can flop 12 to 20%, depending on the makeup of the battle. Um, and also, you know, the composition of units uh, and how the battle unfolds, like a battle calculator might tell you you're going to defeat this, this fleet uh, or that you can't defeat this fleet. But, you know, there's also components where, well, if you attack it, you know, he's going to have to tip his carriers uh, and then he would lose his fighters to get the maximum calculator result. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's elements that the calculator is just not going to tell you. Um, and so it's a, it's a double-edged sword. And, and I find that the people who tend to really rely on them aren't always aware of the, the perils associated with using them. 
So by all means, if you want to use a calculator in a tournament, go for it. Yeah, I, can, I can see it being an issue. Uh, let's say a game like a variant, a game get variant like uh, the BBR. Yeah. You have the, the, the modified rules for battleships where if they're accompanied or cruisers when accompanied by a battleship can defend at four. Okay. Yeah. So what happens when you have to inflict damage on a battleship? That battleship now is reduced to two, defends at two, but your this, your cruiser still defends at four. These are choices that you have to make in the middle of a battle that may that may not be uh, part of the equation as yeah. your uh, battle calculator. Yeah, I, I believe I could be wrong. I never used one, so I don't know if battle calculators allow for that type of. Uh, of, of gaming or you know decision yeah. making. okay there's also uh just errors how about if you make an error during uh when you're inflicting casualties or removing pieces on the board and you remove something you shouldn't be that shouldn't be removed and it changes the equation 100 percent. now what happens then so so yeah I, I guess if you're using a battle calculator you know it, it can be a double-edged sword and it can definitely work against yeah. I, I can see well, and, and the truth is to online uh everybody uses a ballot calculator for almost every battle <laughs> that's just okay. and because it gets it's you know, you've got so much time for your move it, the, the intensity is like right up there and you're you're grinding a battle to see can i get two or three more percent out of this uh, and everybody does it uh okay. so that's uh that's different uh but but face to face yeah i would encourage tournaments i think face to face to not use them just because it's better better format overall but if people really need them then Okay. Don't, don't get your feelings hurt. So we have a couple of minutes left, maybe like two or three minutes, if my clock here is correct. So where do you want to take decoding axes and allies? What, what's, what's the overall objective for this segment of the channel? Well, like the game, uh, I want to take over the world. So <laughs> I think the objective here is let's, let's get this out there. Let's start getting some other people here, uh, some, key, some key players. And then um, let's, let's start trying to connect the dots. And let's let's talk to the guys in who are playing A and A forty two. Uh, let's try and get an interview with them. I don't know. Uh, let's talk to Larry Harris. Let's talk to, you know, the Gen Con tournament guys. Let's get David Jensen here from from A and A org. Uh, let's get Doug Friend from HBG. Let's let's drag the people together and start to try and make a a, a bigger sort of grander community because I think everyone's going to benefit from that. Absolutely. Well said, my brother. Well said. I do have one more question for you. Sure. And it's probably the most important one of the day. Oh, no. Okay. And that's the one. How it is, how is it that you can best help Detroit win the next BBR oh. championship for 2020? Well, I can either not show up or <laughs> I, can, I can come down there and uh, I can be like, all right, Detroit's my man. Because, like, but I'll be honest, uh, you need to get some revenge on your friend Corporal there who caught you loose. Uh, I thought you guys did a great job uh, in 2019. Yeah, I thought you were a great partner for him. And then, uh, you know, at the end of the season, he cut you loose. Like, like pff, I don't even know this guy. It was his fault. I lost it all. <laughs> and then you guys went head to head um, at 2020 BBR. Uh, and I know it was a close game and I was with you right to the end. Uh, and I don't know what happened, Detroit, but he managed to get the one up on you. Well, so you know now, what? Um, in all fairness to Corporal, he's a great guy. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, he, for quite a while, uh, sorry for the in, uh, interference there, for quite a while, he probably thought he was not going to make it to the event. It was a last minute thing where he actually did end up making it. And by that point in time, I had already teamed up with Warpig. And of course, I can't complain. Warpig was a great teammate. We made it to the to the bronze medal rounds and uh, did it. Uh, the game went all the way to the end. I mean, you ask Corporal, he'll tell you he, it was anybody's game until the end. However, his experience uh, did, did come through. Uh, he has a, more experience game-wise than I do. And, and in the end, it made the difference, I think. So it was, but nevertheless, uh, you know, uh, he's a great guy. But hey, but I know you were pulling for me because I was in touch with you. You were, you were sending me messages, and I do appreciate that. <laughs> problem, problem. Well, we'll, uh, we'll deal with Corpo maybe next year. Um, next that, year. that sounds good. And we'll see. Uh, we got to see how the, how the year unfolds. Because uh, I wanted to go this year, but obviously with the pandemic, we were, we were barred up here from Canada. So you guys you guys had to close the border to keep me out. I understand. Uh, hey, but, you know, you can't hey, do it forever. So. Cowboy and Handboy had to find a way to cheat, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had to steal the victory from me. Yeah, that's okay. I understand. <laughs> All right, my brother. So let's uh, wrap it up for the for this uh, uh, episode of uh, decoding axes and allies. Let's hope that we uh, have a second episode 
actually will be a third segment because this is the second one. And yep. um, let's hope that we have, uh, maybe we, we can secure a, an interview where you and I will be co-hosting uh, this segment of, uh, of, the, uh, of the channel. And I look yeah. forward to working with you in the future. Sounds good, man. Hey, thanks for your time. No, thank you. We're out. Good luck, All guys. Right. Thank you.